from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Well, welcome back everyone to theCUBE coverage of IBM Think 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Our next guest, Taylor Holloway, Chief Technology Officer at Advent One. Taylor, welcome to theCUBE from down under in Australia. And we're in Palo Alto, California. Uh, how are you? Well, thanks, John. Thanks very much. Glad to be uh, glad to be on here. Love love the virtual cube. Love the virtual events. We can get to talk to people really quickly with click. Um, great conversation here around hybrid cloud, multi cloud, and all things software enterprise. Before we get started, I want to um, you know, take a minute to explain what you guys do at Advent One. What's the main focus? Yeah. So look, we have um, a lot of customers in different verticals. Um, so, you know, generally what we provide depends on um, the particular uh, industry the customer is in. But generally speaking, we see a lot of demand for operational efficiency, helping our clients tackle cyber security risks, adopt hybrid cloud and set them up to modernize their applications. And this, is, this has been a big wave coming in for sure with, you know, cloud and scale. So I got to ask you, what are the main challenges that you guys um, are solving for your customers? Um, and how are you helping them overcome come that way in, in transformative, and innovative way? Yeah, look, I think um, helping our clients um, improve their security posture is a big one. We're finding as well that our customers are gaining a lot of operational efficiency by adopting sort of open source technology. Red Hat's an important partner of ours as is IBM. Um, and we're seeing them sort of move away from some more proprietary solutions. Uh, and, and automation is a big focus for us as well. We've had some great outcomes with our clients around helping them automate. Um, and, and you know, deliver um, you know the stand up and day two operations of environments a, a lot quickly, a lot more easily, and uh, and to be able to sort of apply some standards across multiple sort of areas of their IT estate. What are some of the uh, solutions that you guys are doing with IBM's portfolio on the IT infrastructure side? You got Red Hat, you got a lot of open source stuff to meet the needs of clients. What do you What do you mean? What's the main uh, um, product? Yeah, look, I think. Well, on the storage side, um, we probably help our clients sort of tackle the expanding data in structured and particularly unstructured data that they're trying to take control of. So, you know, looking at spectrum scale and those type of products from an IBM perspective for unstructured data is a good example. And sort of their flash systems for sort of more block storage and sort of more run in the mill sort of, sort of environments. Uh, we have helped our clients uh, consolidate and modernize on IBM power systems having Red Hat as both a, a Linux operating system and, and having OpenShift as a container platform um, really helps there. And Red Hat also provides sort of a management overlay, which has been great on uh, what we do with IBM Power Systems. We've been working on a few different sort of use cases on power in particular, sort of more recently. Um, SAP HANA is uh, a big one where we've had some success with our clients migrating um, HANA onto, onto IBM Power Systems. And we've also helped our customers you know, improve some um, some environments on the other end of the side, such as IBM I. We still have a, a large number of customers with um, with IBM I, and and you know, how do we help them? You know, some of them are moving to cloud in one way or another. Um, others are consuming some kind of IaaS, and we can sort of wrap around um, a managed service to to help them through. So I got to ask you the question. You know, you CTO, you play with a lot of technologies. Obviously, Kubernetes has become this. Lingua Franca for this kind of like, I would call a middleware kind of orchestration layer. Uh, containers obviously are awesome. Uh, but I got to ask you, when you walk into a client's environment, you don't have to name names, but you know, usually you see kind of two pictures. Man, they need some serious help. <laughs> or they got their act together. So uh, either way, they're both opportunities for hybrid cloud. How do, you, how, do you how do you evaluate the environments when you go in? When you walk into those two scenarios, what goes through your mind? What's some of the conversations that you guys have yeah. with those clients? Can you take me through a kind of day in the life of both scenarios? The ones that are like, I can't get the job done. I'm so close, I don't have the right team. And the other one's like, we're, we're grooving, we're kicking butt. Yeah, so look, let's start, well, I suppose to start off with you try and take somewhat of a technology agnostic view and just sort of sit down and listen to what they're trying to achieve, how they're going. For customers who have got it, you know, as you say, all nailed down, things are going really well. Um, it's just really understanding, well, what, what can we do to help? Uh, there, is there an opportunity for us to help at all? Like there, um, you know, generally speaking, there's always going to be something and it may be, you know, we don't try and if someone's going really well, they might just want someone to help with a bespoke use case or something very specific where they need help. On the other end of the scale where a customer is sort of pretty early on and, and starting to struggle, 
we generally try and help them not boil the ocean at once, just try and get some wins, pick some key use cases, you know, deliver some value back uh, and then sort of grow it from there rather than trying to go into a customer and, you know, trying to do everything at once tends to be a challenge. Just understand what the priorities are and, and help them get going. What's the impact been for Red Hat um, in your customer base? A lot of overlap, some overlap, no overlap coming together. What's the general trend that you're seeing? What's the reaction been? Yeah, I think it's been really good. Um, obviously IBM have a lot of focus on cloud packs where they're you know, bringing their software on Red Hat OpenShift that'll run on multiple clouds. So I think that's one that we'll see a lot more of over time. Um, also, you know, helping customers uh, automate their IT operations with Ansible is one we do quite a lot of. Um, and there's some really bespoke use cases we've done with that as well as some standardized ones. So, you know, helping with day two operations and all that sort of thing. But there's also some really sort of out there things customers have needed to automate. It's been a challenge for them. And being able to use open source tools to do it has worked, you know, really well. And we've had some good wins there. Yeah, I want to ask you about the architecture and I'm just going to simplify it real, just for the sake of DevOps, um, you know, segmentation. You got hybrid cloud, say okay, programmable infrastructure. And then you got modern applications that need to have AI. Some have said, I've even said on theCUBE and other broadcasts that if you don't have AI, you're going to be at a handicap. Some machine learning, some data has to be in there. You're going to probably see AI in mostly everything. As you go in and try to architect that out for customers um, and, and help them get to a hybrid cloud infrastructure with real modern application front, front end yeah. with using data. What's, what's the playbook? Do you have any best practices or examples you can share or scenarios um, or visions that you see uh, playing out? I think the, fir yeah, the first one is obviously making sure a customer's data is in the right place. Um, so if they might be wanting to use um, some machine learning in one particular cloud provider and they've got a lot of their applications and data in another, you know, how do we help them make it um, mobile and be able to move data from one cloud to another or back into a core data center? So there's a lot of that, I think, that we spend a lot of time with customers to try and get a right architecture. And also, how do we make sure it's secure from end to end? So if they're moving things from into multiple, one or more public clouds, as well as maybe in their own data center, making sure connectivity is all set up properly, all the security requirements are met. So I think we sort of look at it from a, you know, from a high level design point of view, we look at it, obviously what the target state's going to be versus the current state that really take into account security, performance, connectivity, all those sort of things to make sure um, that they're going to have a good result. You know, one of the things you mentioned, and this comes up a lot in my interviews with partners of IBM is they always comment about their credibility and all the other, you know, the normal stuff. But one of the things that comes out a lot, pretty much consistently is their experience in verticals. Um, they just have such yeah. a track record in verticals. And this is where AI and machine learning data has to be very much scoped in on the vertical. You can't generalize and have a general purpose data yeah. plane inside a vertically specialized kind of focus. How, how do you see that uh, evolving? How does IBM play there uh, with this kind of the horizontally scalable mindset of a, of a hybrid model, both on-premise and in the cloud, but at that still same provide that, that intimacy with the data to fuel the machine learning or NLP or power that AI, which yeah. seems to be critical. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of services where, you know, cl public cloud providers are bringing out new services all the time. And some of it is pre-canned and easy to consume. I think what IBM from what I've observed has been really good at is, some, is, is handling some of those really bespoke use cases. So if you have a particular vertical with a challenge, um, you know, there's going to be sort of things that are pre-canned that you can go and consume. But if you need to do something custom that could be quite challenging, um, how do they sort of build something that could be quite specific for a particular industry? And then obviously being able to repeat that afterwards. So for, for us, that's obviously something we're very interested in. Yeah, you tell, I love chatting with you, love getting the, the lowdown. Also, people might not know you're a co-author of a book, Performance uh, Guy with uh, IBM yeah. Power Systems. So I got to ask you, since I got you here, um, yeah, and this, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you can just share your vision or any kind of anecdotal observation, as people start to put together their architecture, and, and again, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, every environment's different, but still hy hybrid distributed yep. concept is, is distributed computing. Is there a KPI, is there a best practice on as a manager or a systems architect to kind of keep an eye on what, what good is and how, how good becomes better because the day two operations yep. becomes a super important concept. We're seeing some call it AI ops where, okay, I'm provisioning stuff out on a hybrid 
cloud operational environment, but now day two hits or things happen as more stuff's entered yeah. into the equation. What's your vision on KPIs and management and what to keep track yeah. of? Yeah, I, I think um, obviously attention to detail is really important to be able to build things properly. A good KPI, particularly in our managed service area that I'm curious at understanding is how often do you actually have to log into the systems that you're managing? So if you're logging in and SSHing into servers and all this sort of stuff all the time, all of your automation and configuration management is, is not set up properly. So really uh, a, a good KPI, an interesting one is how often do you log into things all the time? If something went wrong, would you sooner go and build another one and shoot the one that failed <laughs> or go and restore from backup? Um, so thinking about how well things are automated, if things are immutable, using infrastructure as code, those are things that I think are really important when you look at, you know, how is something going to be scalable and easy to manage going forward? What, what I'd hate to see is where, you know, someone builds something and automates it all in the first place and they're, they're too scared to run it again afterwards in case it breaks something. It's funny, the next generation of leaders probably won't even know like, hey, yeah, Taylor and John, they had to log into systems back in the day. You know, I mean, that could be like a story they tell their kids. Uh, but no, but that's a good metric. This is this we're automation. So, so on the next level, let's go to the next level, automation. Um, what's the low hanging fruit for automation? Because you're getting at really the kind of the killer app there, which is, you know, self healing yeah. systems, good networks that are programmable, but automation will define more value. What's your take? Yeah, I, I think the main thing is where you start to move from a model of being able to start small and automate individual things, which could be patching or system provisioning or anything like that. But what you really want to get to is to be able to drive everything through Git. So instead of having a you know written up paper change request, I'm going to change a system and all the rest of it, it really should be driven through a pull request and um, have things through Git uh, and, and build pipelines to go and, um, you know, go and make a change, run it in development, make sure it's successful, and then it goes and gets pushed into production. That's really where I think you want to get to and you can start to have a lot of people collaborating really well on a particular project or a customer, but um, also have some sort of guardrails around what happens in some level of governance rather than being a, a bit of a free for all. Okay, final question. Where do you see Advent One headed? What's their future plans to continue to be a leader, IT service provider leader for using IBM's infrastructure portfolio? Uh, I think it comes down to people in the end. So really making sure that we partner with our clients and to be well positioned to understand what they want to achieve and, and have the expertise in our team to bring to the table to help them do it. Um, I think open source is a key enabler to, to help our clients adopt a hybrid cloud model, which we sort of touched on earlier, uh, as well as be able to make use of multiple clouds where it makes sense. From a managed service perspective, I think everyone is really considering themselves a, a next gen managed service provider, but what that means for us is to provide a differentiated managed service and also have the strong technical expertise to back it up. Taylor Holloway, Chief Technology Officer, Advent One, remote videoing in from down under in Australia. I'm John Furrier in Palo Alto with CUBE coverage of IBM Think. Taylor, thanks for joining me today from the CUBE. Thank you very much. Okay, CUBE coverage, thanks for watching. Yeah,